Hi, today I'm gonna to talk about four things you need to consider when starting a pen club. So I've been running my pen club since 2017. So yeah, four years I've been running a pen club. The first two years I did collabs with different artists every month. And then um, after that, I started doing it all myself. And now I run two clubs. Uh, one is gnome centered, which I do with my husband. And one is cat centered, which I do all by myself. So I've learned a lot <laughs> while running them and let's get into it. So the first thing you wanna think about when you are starting a pin club or you want to kind of redefine the one that you have is pricing. So make sure that you are pricing with a high enough margin to make it sustainable for you. A lot of pin clubs will include shipping. A lot of them will include stickers or extras or different bundles and all this kind of stuff. No matter what you do, I want you to keep it simple for yourself and for your customers and make sure that you are making a profit off of your pin club. Usually pin club margins are a little bit smaller just because we include shipping and extras and things like that. So make sure that when you are pricing out your monthly subscription price, uh, the fee that you charge, you include your retail price for your pin, make sure you get all the stuff you normally do, packaging, um, shipping costs, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you add it all up. Make sure you know your numbers. Make sure you know exactly what you'll get in profit, what your profit margin is, okay? <laughs> um, every single month and make sure it is worth your time because you will be spending a lot of time shipping uh, because you're going to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, subscribers and you wanna make sure it is worth your while. So pricing is very important, obviously. Make sure you're making money. <laughs> I don't want you to overpromise with all of these extras and have all of that extra stuff kind of eat into your cost or even the free shippingness of it all, free shipping, uh, shipping included. Uh, I don't want that to eat into the cost for you. So make sure you are pricing well enough to sustain the product. And number two, I want you to think about timing. So the thing with pen clubs is you have to order in advance and you might not know how many subscriptions are coming in um, ahead of time. So I always like to over order. And uh, when I'm over ordering, I think about uh, about how many I'm, I definitely order how many I have. <laughs> then I am optimistic with how many new subscribers I'm going to get. And then you also have to think about seconds in there too. So I just like to over order for seconds um, because that's just part of the business. <laughs> but make sure you're ordering in enough time. I like to order three months in advance. So I kind of do one order per quarter. That seems to work for me. I don't like working up until the due date, you know, the last possible day when you can order before your manufacturer is going to be able to get stuff to you. That stinks. I've, I've done it before. <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> so think about your timing, make sure you're ordering enough for the people that you have and uh, for wishful thinking. If you have extras, you can either add them to your shop after all of your subscribers have gotten theirs. So that's what I do. So, or you can have a secret shop where it's a password protected part of your shop that only subscribers have access to. So you can have a whole different secondary shop that subscribers have access to like all of your backlog. And then like once or twice a year, maybe you can open that up for um, everyone. And then that can be a fun push um, for sales. But think about your timing, make sure you're not running up into the wire, make sure you've got all of your packaging supplies, all of your shipping supplies, all of your product in plenty of time because I don't want you rushing at the very last minute because doing that every single month is stressful and we don't need that in our lives. Okay, number three is marketing. So with a subscription product, it's going to be running every single month. You're going to want to talk about it every single month. So you are gonna have to be ready to talk about this subscription, talk about your pen club uh, multiple times during the month to get that awareness up and to grab new subscribers. So just, just kind of know that that's gonna be a part of your content and marketing strategy going forward. So, you know, you can do uh, sneak peeks if you want. You can have a mystery pen club if you want. You don't have to. You can show what's coming up, but just know that you're going to be talking about this pen club a lot. <laughs> Social media, emails, all that good stuff. 
So make sure that, uh, just make sure you know that like, oh, this is gonna be a part of my life now is talking about this. <laughs> and fourth, I wanna talk about mindset. So I'm just gonna nip any imposter syndrome you have right in the bud. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna let that go. Like Dharma and Dharma and Greg said, put it in a bubble and blow it away. When I started, there were like, it was me and one other person doing pin clubs. Maybe someone, maybe one other, maybe there was three of us. I don't remember. But it was 2017. <laughs> it was a long time ago. They were brand new. Now, tons of people have pin clubs. And you know what I've noticed from looking at pin clubs? So I'll go around and peek. You can use Patreon, you can use uh, Shopify, you can use Squarespace. There are lots of ways you can host a subscription. But when you look at the numbers that people have if they share them, there are thousands. And just because someone else has thousands of subscribers doesn't mean that someone else is not. People will subscribe to you. People buy from you now because they love, they love your style they love your voice and they want to see what you are going to do. All right. Am I the only person on the planet that makes cat pins? No, <laughs> but I still have people who want new cat pins from me every single month. So I want you to know that just because there are lots and lots of pin clubs out there now, it doesn't mean that there's not room for you. Okay. There's room for everyone. There's room for every artist because everyone has a different perspective. Everyone has a different voice and you have an audience that wants to see what you have to offer. So I'm just putting that out there that if you are worried about, Oh no, no one's going to want to subscribe. You don't know that. All right. You don't know that. And you can't put that on someone else. If they want to subscribe, that's their business. That's not your business. <laughs> they want to buy your stuff. That's their business. <laughs> so those are the four things I want you to think about when starting a pin club. We want to think about pricing, timing, marketing, and mindset. So good luck. If you have a pin club, put it down below. Tell us about it in the comments. Um, I have my own pin clubs. There's Cat Pin Club and the Gnome Adventure Guild. So I'll have links to those down below so you can see kind of how I do things or you can sign up to subscribe because they're amazing. And yeah, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.